Brand new from Radio Oddity is a mini mobile dual band, mini mobile radio called the DB25D. It's compact. It's a 20 watt output. It'll do both uh, VHF, UHF on DMR and analog. We're going to talk about it right now. Shut up and sit down. Welcome back to Ham Radio 2.0. My name's Jason. I'm KC5HWB. If this is your first time joining us here, we do reviews, news, and how-tos of things that are new in amateur radio. This radio is brand new from Radio Oddity. It is an upgraded model of some, some similar looking models from other manufacturers that we have seen before. Ready Oddity took it, they added some features to it, they improved some features upon it, and right now they have a $20 off sale going on their website for a pre-order. This is so new that they're actually not shipping yet. They're going to be shipping by July 20th, is what it says right here. Pre-sale will start July 12th. At 9 a.m. Eastern Time, July 1, 2, and D, is, that's not proper English. That's all right. <laughs> July 12th, so this video is being recorded actually on July 12th, but it will be posted a couple days from now. Items will be shipped before July 20th, so you can get it right now for $219, and it looks like the price when it goes into production and this pre-order button changes to a regular order button, the price will be $239. Some key features of the actual radio itself are listed right here. 20 watt output power and 300,000 con DMR contacts. The previous models from other manufacturers only held 200,000 contacts, so that's one of the things they have upgraded. They've got 20 watts out on high and 5 watts out on low, selectable, 30,000 DMR contact storage. That means uh, 30,000 DMR contacts. They're talking about talk groups there. This is 300,000 Actually, that's probably a typo, too. Should be 300,000 DMR contact storage. So I'll email them about that. Dual band, dual mode, and even dual standby. So that tells me, right, dual standby sa tells me it's not true dual receive, but it is dual st standby. That's good. G it has GPS, which can be used as APRS, which is for real-time digital communications of information in the immediate local area. This is a must-go a must go for any off-road or overland community. So I asked... Radioddity, if it had true APRS transmit and receive capabilities, and they told me that it did. We're going to find that out here in a minute. I'm going to go through the menus and uh, and see what it looks like here in just one second. So a couple of other features is color screen, dual speakers, and seven customizable keys. This is obviously what it looks like right there. And we're going to take it out of the box and see what we see. All right, so this is the box. Some people don't like unboxing videos, so I'm going to speed this up real quick. Here goes. All right, so this is everything in the box. This is obviously the radio itself. This is how small it is. Here's the mounting bracket for it. It's got one point, one mount point on either side of the bracket right there. That goes right there, up and down. It's got pretty thin, thin wire coming out of it, T-connector on it. The T-connector on the power cable goes to a cigarette lighter up adapter so i would probably cut that off and put power poles on it myself but you know you can you have options there this is the uh, programming cable for it it looks just like a looks like a tyt md380 programming cable it's got the chip in the head right here most likely a i don't know if it's prolific or ftdi's chip but, but it looks like there's a chip in the head right there and then it's got a standard two-prong kenwood tile, style connector right there this is kind of neat as as i was taking this out of the box this is a magnet right here so you can put this up on your dash in in the vehicle and it will kind of stick to the dash or stick to a uh, cup holder wherever you want it to as long as it's uh, metallic obviously it will stick to the magnet this right here is the gps antenna that goes on the back of the unit right there I'll zoom down and get a few closer shots of the actual radio itself so these are uh these are the buttons here, tone, volume, P1, 2, and 3. That's your power button. We're going to power it up here in a minute. It, it's almost heavy enough where I thought it might have an internal battery, but I assume that it doesn't since it has that. I'll try to power it up. 
No. Be cool if it was battery powered, but it's not. It's a mini mobile radio. It's not really supposed to be battery powered. I just, just kind of a thought I had with taking it out of the box. Here's this information here. This right here, output power 20 watts, 13.8 volt DC. It goes 136 to 174 megahertz and 400 to 480 megahertz right there. That's the model number. There's the screen, front firing speaker, RJ45 connector on the face of the radio itself. Of course, the face of the radio is the whole radio, and of course, it's got a fan on it. So we're going to power it up, look at the menus, and uh, see where we're going to go from there. We've got the radio powered up here. It's running on this new Astron power supply that uh, you'll be seeing a video for very soon. I appreciate uh, Gigaparts for sending me this power supply for review. You can see the power supply is set at 13.9 volts and the radio is plugged into the power supply via the um, power poles over here. I used an existing T connector that I had that had power poles on it, but it's not drawing hard. It's, it's not even registering on the meter for when it's on standby. So the power supply is powering the radio right now, but the radio is not really drawing anything at all. So it's probably just so low that the power supply doesn't recognize it, which is good. It's, it's good because it's, it's drawing very little power. I'm going to go through some of the menus here, show you what I found. So these three keys up here are programmable. These are P1, P2, and P3 keys. I showed you those a minute ago right there in the camera. Volume and this volume and squelch, tone and uh, T t.sel a tone select the blue in the bottom of the writing and, and also for b and e here the blue is the long press function the white on the top is the short press function so if we short press volume it you, you can see volume flashing in the top right corner there and it goes away after a few seconds it goes back and then if we long press that same key it shows our squelch and we can change the squelch here set it down to zero that kind of thing. So we're in uh, FM mode right now, and it's not opened up the squelch. I do not have an antenna connected right now, so we're probably not going to hear much of anything. Uh, you can open up the monitor right there, turn the squelch completely off, like that. This is a brightness. That's just what it's auto set for. Again, these P1, P2, P3 buttons on the top are programmable. And then this one locks the screen. You hit it again to unlock it. In addition to the three buttons, P1, 2, and 3, on the microphone itself, let's see if that's in focus there. Yeah. So on the microphone itself, the there's four more buttons down the side, P4, 5, 6, and 7, which are also programmable. Uh, P4 right now says cannot run. That's that's a digital feature, so we're going we're gonna to go down here to the other band. So that's a contact list if you press P4. We're going to exit that. If I press P5, it's a create message for sending text messages over DMR. P6 does not. P6 locks the key or locks the screen, and it says long press menu to unlock. So you can't unlock it with that same key again. So I have to unlock it here. And then P7 doesn't really do anything at all. Again, these are the default settings for the P4 five, six, and seven on the microphone here, which are programmable. You can do it in the software. I have not even installed the software yet. Might do that in another video because I found some really cool functions in here. So in order to get into the menu, it took me a second to figure this out. In fact, I did look in the manual. You've got the menu button or the menu reading on the screen down here at the bottom left and the AB at the bottom right. Well, guess what? There's no buttons down here underneath that. So it's a little bit ambiguous about how to get from, from, one spot to the other but to get into the menu all you do is short press this volume knob right here just like that and you're in the scan menu and then you can scroll through these menus there's eight menus in this right here again it, it the menu is going to follow the type of channel you're in right now we've got the top band selected which is fm and i can use the be key to switch the short press the be key to use switch between the top and the bottom band you can see the red arrow on the left that selects which band we're on if i go to the digital channel on the bottom the way you can tell is DN right there is digital narrow, kind of like a fusion thing, although it's not fusion, it's DMR. And then the top band is FM, which is their symbol for analog. So that's how you can tell if your channel is on digital or analog. So if we go into, if we, if we select the digital channel and go into the menu, you can see there's 12 menus. That's one of 12 right there. If we exit out there and we go back to the analog channel and select 
the menu. There's eight menus. So there's not as many features in, in FM analog, but that's normal. That's totally normal. So we've got scan, zone and channel, local set. You can set your time zone and date. Uh, parameters. That's a timeout timer, power, squelch level, band, uh, busy channel lockout, signaling, and C CTCSS tail. 120. Okay, well, I'll just leave it there for now. All right, so we'll go back here. Parameters, tone set. You can set that there. Appendix, which is like your GPS information. Found this APRS menu. We're going to look at that here in a second because that's really cool. Device info. We can see the version. This is latest version was installed on this radio May 12th. Uh, 909E.D4.EARSAB.007. So I will have to look that up and see if maybe there's an update I can do on it. Channel edit and go in here and change the transmit and receive frequency. You can change it from analog. You press this again and you can change it to receive digital analog and transmit analog. Transmit digital analog and transmit digital Digital only, analog only. It's got a couple of options in there. It's got those multi-mode options. Very similar to the AnyTone options that are in there, which I've never actually toyed with. So we're going to go ahead and select analog. You can change the power. Receive only, off or on. Wide or narrow. CTCSS. Tones. This is uh, receive. That's TX subtype, it says at the top left. That's your receive tone. A1, I don't know what that does. Save to current channel. Save to selected channel. So current channel, you can save it to the channel you're currently on, or you can pick your own channel back there. So those are some menu parameters there. Another way to get into that same channel edit menu is to long press this BE key on top, and it takes you to that same channel, same channel edit. So you can go in there and edit your channels, change it DMR to analog back and forth, and go from there. These channels are channel 1 underscore 12. I don't know what the one, I think that the one must mean the zone. There's only one zone programmed into it right now, but if I change the channels, it still says channel 1 underscore, and then the number after that changes. So there's 17 channels in there right now. All right, let's go look at the analog or i'm sorry let's go look at the aprs menu because i found that to be rather fascinating so that's going to be and it looks like it's both in it, it's in both the analog menu and the digital menu so we're just going to go in like here appendix that's where it's at okay so we go to this gp this aprs the square with the the white square on top of the blue square with the blue g in it okay so we can go to aprs type and you can do analog or DMR APRS. Turn on analog. Now we can go into the analog APRS menu. You can do PTT upload, yes or no. You can at start or at end, or you can just turn that off. Upload power, do low or high. Upload frequency. So I can set uh, 144.56 or 59. I always forget which one it is. I can set that there. 144.39. Google is your friend. So I can go ahead and type that in on the keypad here. 144.39. Now, this part is not intuitive at all. I had to go, I had to look in the manual because this is just not intuitive. So we want 144.39, and the dot has to be in there. So what you do is long press the pound sign on the, on the, on the microphone, and it changes this parameter in the menu right now. You've got capitalized AB. Long press it again. Got capitalized PY, which is uh, Chinese characters. And then we're back to 1, 2. So I'm going to type 4, 4, just like that. And then I want to, I need a dot for 144.390. So I long press this again. Long press the pound sign. And I can go to AB, lowercase, or AB capitalized, whichever, and then type the 1 key, and then that's it. Then I have to go back to the numbers. and type 39123, just like that, and hit OK, and there it is, set OK. 
and it goes back to the menu. So now our upload frequency is set for 144.39. And we'll go back there, and then we can do upload path, which is not sure what that is, so I'm not going to worry about that right now. Upload text. Upload path is something that I was looking at on the AnyTone radio the, the other day. So um, let's see. Yeah, you have to type something special in there. So I'll have to go look that up later. I'm not going to do that right now. Anyway, it appears to have all the necessary menus to, to actually work analog APRS, which is really fun because most radios that come out of China don't work analog APRS. So the fact that this has analog APRS is a great feature, in my opinion, and it could make this radio a little bit more versatile than some of its competitors. It, it is only 20 watts, okay? So it's going to be a Q and kind of QRP, kind of not. 20 watts isn't technically QRP, but for a VHF radio, it's not high powered. It's not going to be like a 40 or 45 watt radio. A couple of key notes that Radiodity want, wanted me to mention is it enables a speaker mic to adjust the volume by default. The mic port is down here at the bottom, right above the Radiodity name, and then the speaker is in the top. So you can probably enable that in the menu. I didn't mess with that part. Uh, CPS supports bulk import of contacts. So you can download contacts from Radiodity.net and import them in bulk into the CPS. It takes the digital contacts from 200K to 300K, uh, it added the APRS function. The previous models, which I think were the KYD and the Redivus models that looked very similar to this radio, did not have APRS. I think they might have had GPS, but having GPS and having APRS are two different things. Okay, so it's very important to note that for some folks that don't understand what APRS is. This radio took uh, went from 16 zones to 64 different zones, 64 different zones, which means it'll hold more channels. You can kind of divide them up more customizably. Each zone can contain up to 250 channels. The DMR list is 250. I asked them what that meant. What is DMR list? They said the receive groups. There's 250 different receive groups. In the world of receive groups, those aren't really used much anymore for these radios that have promiscuous or monitor mode. So I asked them the question about promiscuous and monitor mode, and I haven't got a response from them yet. So I'm waiting on a response to that. Perhaps I'll put a blurb in here later, but not sure if it has a promiscuous mode right now. If it didn't, I would be surprised since it's such a newer design. But uh, but I'm I don't have that information for, with me right now. It is IP54 waterproofs and it comes with a programming cable, improves the speaker mic for better holding feel and four customizable function keys. So apparently the other ones didn't have as customizable or large of a speaker mic. So that's a couple of the things that Radiodity asked me to mention in the video. So I think what I'll do is go ahead and wrap this one up. Went through the menus, did some, uh, showed you what everything looked like. I'm going to take this out to the truck. I might take it out to the truck, or I might even just take it out in a go box or something with a bio and a battery or something on it and do some testing with it and see what kind of APRS functionality it has. Uh, talk a little bit into the my home backyard repeater I've got and do another video later on. But I wanted to get this video up because Radiodity, they just sent me this radio. It re I received it three days ago at the time of this, two days ago at the time of this recording, and they're running this $20 off pre-sale right now. So they wanted me to get it up as soon as possible so that if you are interested in it, you could save $20 off of the price right now. Additionally, and I assume that this will work, my viewers get a $15 off of a $65 or more order with the coupon code that I have posted in the bottom, in the YouTube description below. So you can go down there and click on that. And I, I assume that the $15 off would work on this brand new product, but I don't know for sure. It's certainly over $65. So it should work, and it applies to most everything on the Radiodity website, but since this radio is brand new, try it and see and let me know. I'm curious about who might want to purchase this if you can use my $15 off coupon off of the $219 price. Try that and see. Tell me who's interested in this radio. Tell me who thinks you might get it, uh, what features you would like to see added on it uh, later. The fact that it has APRS is really fun, I think, and it would fit in a go box really well. So I'm probably going to be putting that this one in my go box upcoming for some analog and DMR VHF UHF operation. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>